Yeah, and they're, to your, to you know, but or something. those Giants may have been alcoholics, too. I mean, they may have um, <laughs> all those grapes. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You know, they get drunk laying around, and somebody comes up and does them in. They don't know it. They just never wake up. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> That's what happened to Santa Ana, you know, down here in Texas. Should have been drinking. <laughs> Well, there's actually a detailed description of giant cities in a book written by Dr. Josius Leslie Porter. Uh, it was written, uh, it was published in London in 1865, and it's entitled Giant Cities of Bashan and Syria's Holy Places. So I'm gonna, I want to get my hands on that. I'm actually going to go to Amazon and, and <coughs> order it and find out more. But he seems to be an authority on the on the culture, and I don't know where he gets his information, but I'm I'm definitely going to find out. Jo Josius Lester Porter. Yep, Doctor Josius Leslie Porter. Well, there's a, a structure over there that <clears throat> shows up in some of the antiquities books, and it almost looks like a a, a hangar for a, a big, uh, you know, uh, zeppelin. It's mm -hmm. just enormous. It must. It looks like it's about 50, 75 feet tall, and it's this giant Quonset type building made out of stone or mud or something. And one end of it's sort of falling apart. You look at that, and you go, "Why in the world would a normal sized people build anything like that?" But if the men were 20 feet tall or so, it may have been one of their cities, one of their houses. That's just, I just find all this fascinating. Well, you know what? I was reading the, the book of uh, Enoch. My, my wife bought me the Sony Reader. It's like a Kindle for Christmas. And that was the first book that I downloaded, the book of Enoch. Mm -hmm. And um, it says, it talks about the giants in the book of Enoch. And it also says that the giants are coming back. Right. It says they're sleeping in like a mountain right now, like they're in stasis. Hmm. So I wasn't feeling really good about reading that part because they made it sound like they're gonna get <clears throat> God's gonna actually use the giants in, in on judgment day as well and send them is, people are gonna try to hide in their houses and on their rooftops and I guess their houses are gonna be like intamin boxes to them. They're just gonna open us up and eat us like a ding dong or a, or a cupcake or something but I, I, I was very concerned about that because I was like how can they still be alive <clears throat> yeah I don't know that that book like uh, some of those other books that they're suspect you know uh, I think Jesus quotes the book of Enoch <clears throat> but there are other books um, uh, the book of um, Adam and Eve, Eden, or something. I lost Book of Eden, something like that. It is so depressing to read that I wouldn't recommend anybody but a seasoned, older, long-time Christian to even read it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is so depressing. And uh, <clears throat> if it's made up by the Jesuits, like some people say, it's, it's clever writing. If it's true, I mean, it was a sad situation. Uh, and some of those other books, like the Book of... Um, Jasher, you know, it doesn't read like it's made up. It doesn't read like a fake book. But, boy, the stories in there, you just, your eyes pop out and go, oh, my gosh, is that really the way it is? Is that what really happened? So there's reasons why those books aren't included in the canon. But mm -hmm. to just dismiss them as Jesuit writings, you know, is a little bit hasty. There's, there's stuff in there that does ring true, and you just wonder. But some of it is so bizarre that um, it's it's hard for us to comprehend. Even if it's made up, <clears throat> it's still hard to comprehend what they're trying to say. <clears throat> Does the Catholic Church have giant skeletons in their possession? They seem to have been around for a long time, and probably like they're probably still one of the most powerful, influential institutions. Have you heard of them, them <clears throat> uncovering giant evidence and then suppressing it? No, I haven't, <clears throat> but I know the Vatican uh, vaults. They, they have uh, a, a fabulous, no telling how many billions of dollars worth of art and artifacts 
and uh, things like that in, in their storage that they've collected over the years. Maybe some of it was Roman, but they've got a lot of stuff. They've, they've of course, had the power. Everywhere they've been in power, like in Europe, <clears throat> if, if somebody found something, it's going to be kind of come to the attention of the local priest. So, and a lot of times people, the first thing they do is they call the sheriff or the teacher, the professor or the priest, you know, something unusual. And since the, the Catholic Church had these buildings, there was some place to put stuff like that. <clears throat> and probably a lot of these giant skeletons were brought to the Catholic churches and then um, put in storage boxes, maybe displayed for a while, reburied, destroyed, the place burned down. We don't know. But the Catholic Church has stuff in their archives that uh, probably blow your imagination. But as long as they've been over there, they've got a they certainly have had opportunity to acquire giant skeletons. But I've never read one Catholic writing that it even acknowledges them, which doesn't mean anything because I've read all the Catholic stuff, but I've never even heard it broached. So it would be interesting to know. Well, you know the Catholic Church is actually supporting Darwinism now. They're telling oh, yeah. you they're, they're, not, they're not really saying that, that God created man. It was evolution. Yeah. And they're also telling their believers that um, that aliens are real and they are our space brothers. I didn't know that. I mean, that's this whole alien thing. <clears throat> there, there is something going on there. Uh, nobody quite knows for sure what it is, but the so-called messages that these things give out are generally anti-Christian. That Christ right. and Christians are the problem. So. If somebody's just making it up, or if they're actual beings or demonic uh, manifestations, then it's they're still generally uh, anti-Christian. So mm -hmm. they're not our brothers. Yeah, I find it totally uh, bizarre mm -hmm. and suspicious that, that aliens, I say in quotes, are going to travel billions of light years, or however they get here, and they're going to support the occult and deny Christ. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I I think that apparently there's a, there are real strong, persistent stories of actually finding little green men, little gray men, and uh, the the human kind, the human body has taken on a, a a pretty wide variety of shapes and colors, you know. <clears throat> There's deformities and things like that of people that uh, they're still human, and but they look real different than what you'd ordinary think people look like. So are these things some form of humanity that is deformed? We don't know. But uh, is it some beings? Can some demon manifest itself in some sort of fleshly body? You know, and uh, then when they kill it, it could be studied. I don't know. But there is a persistent story that that is true, you know. So a lot of times things that persist over a long period of time, you have to give them some kind of credence uh, because hoaxes and myths either have to have a lot of power and money behind them or they have to have the, a nucleus of truth to last for very long. So I don't know, <clears throat> but I, I think you're safe to... Uh, assume they're in some sort of uh, some sort of manifestation of demons, but uh, I don't know. It's still a big mystery, and they've been going on a long time. Well, I don't know. When you read when you read uh, about Abraham in like Genesis chapter eighteen verses one to eight, it a actually tells you that these angels can appear in human form, but they're mm -hmm. not human, and they can right. still turn themselves into spirit, and they can still travel faster than the speed of light because uh abraham had them in his uh his tent and he actually uh fed them they eat mm -hmm. yeah. and uh that happened with abraham and then when you read uh when they went to, to lot when they stayed with lot um apparently angels are um human looking they can be mistaken for humans and they can they're extremely attractive as well and so they, they, they do seem to be able to transition to physical and then to spirit. So they're not like us, per se. Right. And there was a gentleman by the name of Roger Morneau. It's M-O-R-N-E-A-U. You can Google him. 
and he uh, he used to be an occult practitioner, and he said, or he claims that he's actually seen the fallen angels, and he's like, they're beautiful. He's like, they're just as beautiful as they were before they fell, and they just sell people on the fact that it was just a major.